Welcome to virtual worship here at College Hill Presbyterian Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. My name is Bill Noble. I'll be the liturgist this morning. I'm also a member of session and the moderator of the worship and music ministry team. As we prepare for this week at College Hill, our session will meet this week and again try to discern the best way forward during these perilous times in terms of when we can convene again as a congregation here in the sanctuary. Please hold the session in your thoughts and prayers. With that announcement, we turn now to the prelude as we prepare for worship this morning. has come and continues to come to make all things new. It is good to gather in the name of the Lord, even though physically distanced, young and old, friends and visitors, bound together by faith. Let us open ourselves to God's sacred presence beyond, among, and within us.
please join in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we pray that as we worship, our faith may be enlivened, our trust deepened, and our commitment expanded to meet the challenges and times of trial in our lives during this pandemic. We acknowledge that there are periods when we feel like we're out in a small boat on rough seas, when we become fearful, calm the storms that we face, trusting that you are near. Encourage us to be the community of mutual caring to which we are called, and hear now our silent prayers of reflection and confession. God's forgiving presence is among us to bring healing and wholeness. May the God of mercy, who forgives our sins, strengthen us in all goodness. Amen.
not at the church this Saturday afternoon, along with Bill and Mike and Diane recording or videoing the service for tomorrow, because I've had a really tough week medically, and I've uh, wanted to keep my options op open, so I'm recording here from home. I started getting COVID symptoms on Monday afternoon, and it's been, a, like I said, a tough week. I spoke with the doctor on Wednesday, got a COVID test on Thursday, found out yesterday on Friday that it was negative, which is fantastic, except, and I know others have uh, felt the same way, but then what is it? Um, it's still a viral infection. I just don't know how contagious or when it'll go away. Uh, the good news about today is this is uh, kind of fun to get dressed uh, and out of the pajamas that I've been in all week, except for going in for the COVID test. So I'm just going to ramble a little bit because part of this truly is a brain fog and not being too terribly coherent. So this is just going to be a bit of a, a church chat. For those of you who remember that, I uh, told Bill Noel, we were conversing a bunch this week uh, about being able to uh, write a proper sermon or not, and finally decided uh, today that no, it's still, still not up to that. So I'll just share just a few things. Um, I've uh, got a response from several people about, oh my gosh, you're the pastor. Your pastors aren't supposed to get sick. You're the ones who take care of us when we're sick. It uh, reminded me of growing up with three brothers and a sister, and uh, mom always taking care of us when we were sick, and on the very rare occasion that she got sick, uh, we had that feeling of, oh my goodness, no. How do we take care of you? You're the one who knows how to take care of people. Well, Glad to tell you that uh, College Hill folks are taking care of each other. A, a huge thank you to the Congregational Care Team, of course. And we will be meeting on Sunday afternoon with the Reunion Ministry Team to figure out how to proceed. The weird thing about this past week, however, is that uh, Lisa Hayes, our office manager, was on vacation. and. I wasn't about to call her on Monday late or then Tuesday and say, I just uh, can't be at the church, um, so you have to come back from vacation. So the church was empty last week. I hope uh, that didn't inconvenience uh, anyone. I uh, haven't been to the church myself since a week ago Saturday when I recorded by myself because uh, the music portion was recorded on the Wednesday before that even. So I haven't been around hardly anyone, haven't been out and about, so all those things are good. And uh, taking lots and lots of naps are, is the main thing. There really isn't much else to do except wait for this to, to run its course. But I haven't figured out exactly about this coming week or not about whether quarantining myself for another week at least, because um, even if the test is negative, I still don't want to give anybody else whatever it is I have. So uh, you heard the scripture passage that Bill read about that story from Matthew, and uh, it immediately follows the feeding of the 5,000. And Jesus, though, before that story, was on his way to be by himself because he had heard about the beheading of John the Baptist. And the scripture tells us that immediately after the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus again tried and did, and was able to get away up to a mountain to be by himself and to uh, recharge and sent the disciples on ahead. And there was the, the famous story of the big storm that uh, swept up over the Sea of Galilee and Jesus walking on the water, and then wondering if it was a ghost, and the famous line when Jesus said, it is I, which is another way of saying I am, which is the, basically the, the God, the language for God in both the Old Testament and then the New. So when anyone puts on the lips of Jesus in the New Testament, I am, 
especially John, the as I am statements, that is the gospel writer's way of saying that when you look at this Jesus, you are looking at our understanding of the nature and character of God. Wow, can't believe I got that much out of my brain. So what I wanted to share with you now is uh, a brief poem written by someone I, I quote fairly often, Steve Garnis Holmes, it's from his website, unfoldinglight.net. And uh, this is simply called, It Is I, and it is a reflection on this particular Bible story. Serene one, when the wind is against me, battering, it is you who walk on the sea of my troubles. When I am panicked, you are the one who says, do not be afraid, it is I. On the waves of my heart, you stand firm and calm them, not with magic, but with your presence. It is I. Not escaping them, nor after they are stilled, but still raging, you invite me into the waves of suffering and injustice. I do not calm them, I stand firm not by my ability, but by hanging on to you, even when, as I shall be, I am sinking. It is you who hold me up, you who are steady in my fear, you who heal the turbulence over the waters of chaos, even before let there be light, you said, it is I. I hope you can find a way to not only take this to heart, but find the connections of what's going on in your own life and standing in those storms. Uh, I entitled this sermon, Having the Courage to Get Out of the Boat, because I was going to do a, a reflection on even in a storm, sometimes huddling with others in a boat is safer than walking out on the waves. Sometimes it's only when we have the courage to step out that we find, yes, turbulence, but also ministry. And in these very troubled times, especially around issues of racial justice and others, I encourage you, I keep encouraging myself, encourage us as a congregation to step out of the boat, to have the faith that even when we start to sink, that we know that Jesus is there present with us. And whenever I've preached on this, uh, this passage, I've always brought up the fact that a lot of us were taught that the moral of this story is uh, Peter only started to sink when he became afraid and took his eyes off of Jesus. So therefore, we'll be fine if we keep our eyes focused on Jesus, and any time uh, we don't, we're going to sink. Well, we know a life of faith isn't that simple, um, or trite. So I prefer the understanding that, no, we walk out into troubled times, and even knowing we might not succeed, we do not completely sink because Jesus is there to uh, be present. And to be present, of course, has a lot of strong and different meanings for those of us on the progressive side of Christianity. Well, I uh, have tried to keep the dogs at bay. I put them out uh, before I started this. Uh, it's probably 95 out there right now, and that's why I'm not recording outside, but they are scratching to get it in, and pretty soon they're going to start whining and other things. So I'm going to pause for a minute and let them in. I want to rely on the work of yet another as the pastoral prayer for today. It's by, you've heard her name a lot lately, Jill Duffield, the editor of the Presbyterian Outlook. Loving and gracious God, as we navigate the strong headwinds 
and seek to see you through our fatigue and fears. We confess that you are the one who stills the storm and immediately reaches out your hand to keep us from drowning. We rest for a moment in the joy of your presence, no longer afraid, free from anxiety, assured that you do not leave us alone, but seek us out when we are most in need of your peace. We know, gracious God, that none of our thoughts and hopes, our doubts or worries are off limits to your care and compassion. We know you, our teacher and our friend, welcome us as we are and hear whatever is on our hearts and minds. We ask you to hear our prayers for those in our midst most battered by the storms of our time. Grab the hands of those about to go under the waves of poverty, or financial crisis. We ask for your intervention on behalf of families unable to provide basic necessities for their children, our siblings wrestling with food insecurity, those on the cusp of eviction, and the unemployed facing the end of benefits. As we see those about to be swamped by the waves of this pandemic, Move us to act in ways that lift others out of the roiling sea. Reach out and give courage and strength to people in leadership positions. Grant them wisdom to make decisions in the best interests of the most vulnerable. Inspire communities to use their power and resources, their will and gifts, to support the people on the margins those for whom this difficult season has been catastrophic. We pray for teachers, administrators, parents, and students as they all seek to navigate a new school year rife with uncertainty and unprecedented challenges. We are mindful of essential workers who are facing the danger of this public health crisis every day. Protect and sustain them, loving God. And we lift up the sick and all those who suffer. Give them hope, bring relief, surround them with your mercy. On this day, loving God, we pray for your healing and wholeness for Pat Lucy, for Margaret Duncan Watson, for Bobby Hornbeck and Mary, for Charlotte Bronston, who fell this past week. And we also celebrate with all those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. And especially remember this day, that on the 9th of this month, Lisa Hayes, our office manager, will be celebrating her 10th anniversary with us, and us with her. We give you thanks for her remarkable, and professional work among us and with us over these past 10 years, a full decade. It has made an enormous difference in the functioning of College Hill and in my own functioning as its pastor. So bless her with continued health and wholeness and just good times and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us gather now together in the Lord's Prayer. Our God who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
please join me in our affirmation of faith. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. In gratitude to God at this time, let us gather our pledges and offerings. As a reminder, you can mail your pledges to church or do it online at the website. Take heart, do not be afraid. Know God's presence is with you and within you. We go forth empowered by God as people guided by love and compassion. Amen. Mm -hmm.